this video is about the Sawgrass SG800 or 400. They're both of the same. This is the wide format. Now I received this machine because that it was getting a, an error code 20,000 and it turns out to be a bad motor. But before it happened the customer was experiencing uh, the magenta was not printing any ink. Well I discovered that he was using an aftermarket sublimation ink um, and it doesn't seem to work that well. So you got to be careful what ink you're using in these machines. Now we only sell American made certified sublimation ink. Now I'm going to take you right through this because I thought it would be interesting because I get a lot of emails about this. <clears throat> As you can see I stripped down the printer because I wanted to show you some details about it. Now I'm going to show you how you can flush out the printhead if you have to. But first I wanted to go over a couple things. Now this is what goes into the cartridge. They're like little needles that have springs on them. And as you push your cartridge, it collapses. Now, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see this. I'm going to try to get a close-up. But right here, right by my nail, there's a little hole. That's where the ink goes in. So the ink has to go in. Now, you can't force cleaner through here because there's this other little part of the machine. It's a meter. In other words, as you push the ink in, it stops there. Then they have a set of gears and stuff that open it up at certain times so it'll feed ink to the printhead. Now it's very unlikely you're going to get a clog in this hose. Very unlikely. Uh, most likely if you're going to get a clog or you're going to get a problem, it's going to be up here where that little hole is. I can't really get a good shot at it because it's so tiny. I took this all apart just so you could see this. So if you try forcing cleaner in there, it's going to be stopped right here. Then you go over here, and this connects to that in the bottom. You can see that. I disconnected it. And it goes on up, follows along, and goes to the printhead. Now, you can flush the printhead, but you can't flush it from the cartridge side. I'm going to show you a little bit later in the video how to uh, just take this up and flush it. Put a paper towel down in here. If you got any shop towels, they're good to use because they don't really have a lot of lint on them. Now I'm going to use a paper towel, but because I'm pushing liquid out, not pulling it in, I don't have to be concerned about it the lint that I'm going to expose it to. So, so that's really what you're, uh, to flush that print edge, you don't have to take, you don't have to take the machine apart. You got the one top cover here, and then you'll have a little cover on the print head that slides off like that. But really all you need is the top cover. You don't even have to take the sides off. It doesn't make any sense to take the sides off because there's very little you can do over here to fix anything. But what had happened is the carriage wouldn't go back and forth because of the motor. And that's what caused the error code. But prior to that, he was having trouble with his magenta. So I said, well, send it to me and I'll uh, see if I can get it going again. But after checking about that error code, I found out um, you'd have to replace that motor. And actually, Sawgrass sent them out another printer. They didn't even want this one back. You have to take off the back cover. That'll expose the printhead. But now you won't be able to get at it because there's a black cover like that over it. So you have to take out one more screw right here. And you take this out of your way. And now that'll expose it like that, and you just push it to the 
has a little unlocking clips on each side. Now, you can pick whatever color you're having problems with and, and you use a pair of needle nose and just get on this little rubber boot that they pulled here and you could pull it up. I might be able to pull it up. Let me get a pair of uh, needle nose on the little boot. So that's what it looks like. Just a little, and it just goes right over that little stem that sticks up. So when you get our cleaner, we give you the purge tip that comes with it. It's a little small, tiny hole, so when it goes over there, it's going to be very tight. You want it tight because you want to be able to push down on it, get a little pressure there. And then we should start to see something flow on the bottom of the paper napkin. And then I'll get another syringe, I'll fill it with ink, and then I'll push ink in there. So when I start up, I'm already primed. If I just left chemical in there, then I would dilute or damage all the ink that's there that would be coming in. So we want to flush it out with ink. A little purge tip on there. It's on the syringe and I slowly push down. I felt a little resistance, but I'm going to get pushed just a little bit and let the chemical do its job. Now what I recommend is you heat it up. Heat the chemical to the temperature of coffee. By heating it up, that'll help it break down the ink. There it is. I got it. Okay, look at that. Perfect, perfect. Perfect. That's what you want to do. Now I would take this off. Now if the other ones are working, don't fix them. Because you just add to your problem. Now if you're dealing with a clogged black printhead or or yellow, whatever it is, just deal with that. Now I'm going to get a syringe with the, and use that same tip and I'm going to put a little magenta back in there. Good. Now I filled the syringe with some ink, some of our sublimation ink. I slowly push it down. Oh, it's a lot easier now. A lot easier. That, that Whatever the clog did, it was enough that no matter how many cleanings he did, it wouldn't come through. I'll move along. There it is. Now, well, I got this all apart here. I can bring it over. This is called the capping station. When the printhead comes over, this comes up and sucks the ink. Okay, when it's doing that, the control mechanism here allows ink to flow through the hose and to fill the printhead. Once it does that, then this closes off and it only supplies ink to that printhead on demand. But this is where your cleaning is. So it sucks it down there and then there's a little tube that runs down from the bottom of it. It's right here, a little black tube right there. Goes out and then it goes through here and into the collection box. That's that waste box. Now we have a chip so you can take the box apart, clean it out. You don't have to replace it. You don't have to waste any money. Clean it, put a new chip on it, and then you'll be able to just slide that box right back in. Just by replacing the, because the plastic doesn't go bad. It's a shame we throw all this stuff away and it really doesn't need to be thrown away. So I'm against that. I, I think it's a lot easier to replace that little chip. And all that is is a money maker. We all know that. Now when I take this apart, and I have a video show you how to take it apart, you can use, um, I fold up paper towel, tissue paper, whatever, just enough to absorb the ink. And the ink will eventually evaporate and leave the dye behind. So it really doesn't gush out. Okay? So now this is the sawgrass. By the way, this is a, these are excellent printers for sublimation printing. They really are. I do recommend that you use quality ink. I will support the manufacturer on that. If you use cheap ink, you're going to get what you pay for. You're going to ruin a perfectly beautiful machine. This, was, this printhead was just 
not functioning. And then, well, unfortunately, he had the problem with the motor at the same time. So he had a double whammy here. So now I'll put it all back together because you'll never have to take it apart like I did. I just wanted to do that for the video. So I'll put it all back together and um, decide whether we're going to replace that motor or not. The problem is it's very hard to get parts. You know, the manufacturer doesn't want to sell parts. Otherwise, if I could buy that part, and I'll probably be able to find it, but I would buy the part and fix it. It's a lot easier to fix this stuff than it is to throw it away. I don't know why they didn't want it back. Maybe they can't fix it. I don't know. So go to inkproducts.com for the latest in sublimation and just general printing products. SG400 with our uh, refillable cartridges and our Ultra Pro sublimation ink. Very little profiling, if, if any, with our ink. And the video, as you can see, I did was on the 800, the SG 800. If you notice, it's the same design. Both printers, same design. And they have the same error codes.